So, what have we got here? Pheasant. Male or female? Do you want to change your mind? Say again, sorry? They are absolutely, yeah. So there's, there's some lovely colours on there. Okay, so it's a male, it's called a cockbird. Okay, how old is that? Not very. How, how do we know not very? It's not very big, possibly, yeah. It's not very fat. Other reasons? How, how else do you think you might be able to tell? The tail, as in what, as in it gets longer? Best ways, so if someone gave that to you, you need to know, is that a, a young bird or an old bird? For the reason being is if it's a nice young bird, take the breasts off, pan fry them, beautiful. If it's an old wily bird, it's probably gonna fit better into a, you know, a bit of a slow cooking stew, casserole, that sort of thing, okay? So the things to do, beak, okay? Is it soft and pliable? Is it really old and tough? Okay. Also, think of how, if you look at that's got quite a nice point on it. If that had been feeding for two or three years on the floor, that would probably be a bit more rounded off. Okay. Feet. A bit like us, or me like me, as we get older, we get a bit drier and a bit wrinklier and a bit scalier. Okay. You've also got on the back of there, See those little claws on the back of that? Okay. And obviously the feet themselves. You've got these sort of, um, again, they will, depending on whether they're sort of really long and thin or sort of quite short and stumpy, they will sort of, they're, they're little sort of notes, just to sort of, you know, take note of to say, that, you know, again, that's, that's quite a sort of a, a young or an old bird. Okay, so that's our, our cock pheasant. And this one, partridge, duck, any others? Grouse is not a grouse. It's actually a hen pheasant, okay? So it's exactly the same as this, but it's a female version, okay? A bit smaller. Um, what, this doesn't, what this doesn't have, and you can, open, you can see that, see these little spurs on the back? Yeah, no spurs on, on the hen bird. So that's the best way that if you've got um, a bird, obviously, that's uh, been plucked and still got the legs on, you can tell male or female because spurs and, and no spurs, okay? So, yeah, they are a bit sort of, after this beautiful thing, they are a bit sort of dull looking, aren't they? But that's our, that's our hen bird. No, completely the opposite, absolutely. So this would be partridge, okay? Now, we've got two partridges in this country. We've got the French red leg and we've got the English grey, okay? Which one's this? Red leg. Red leg, absolutely. Um, much more common. You certainly find them on a lot more estates um, than you do the English. The English, for some reason, struggle to survive the winters they don't breed as well um, they're certainly harder to manage so we sort of tend to be overrun with these with these little sort of red leg partridges um, but nice small bird tastes fantastic and quite again quite quite a sort of nice colorful bird snipe any guesses on this side? Woodcock. Okay, so we've got one snipe and one woodcock. What's the difference? Male and female. No, no. Two different birds. If you had a woodcock and a snipe next to you. They both got very similar beaks. Slightly, slightly, but there's one significant I always find. If you have, it's color, it's color, yeah. And what you'll find is, if you look on top of the head, that plumage goes from left to right, okay? A snipe goes back and forth. 
So you've got a stripe going that way, whereas a snipe goes the other way, okay? Say again? Well, I mean, size, size is a giveaway. If you saw it, you'd know it. But if you're a bit, if you if you wasn't sure, the the, the easy way is look on top of the head, and you'll just see that. See the sort of stripes go yeah. sideways, where the others go almost like long bands right through the top of the head. It's the only bird um, that we roast whole. Okay. Now, so what you do basically is obviously wings off. Um, I think I've got one in there. It's, uh, it's plugged, but it's, what you tend to do then is you use this nice long beak to sort of truss itself back up. So you put that back through its thighs and it sort of holds itself in a nice little position. And you roast that as it is. And the reason you roast it whole is because it, it has no spleen. So everything inside its heart, its liver, kidneys, they all basically just form into one and create like its own little pate inside. So your, your bird comes out of the oven Put a spoon inside the cavity and it all comes out as one, okay? And what you're supposed to do traditionally is take yourself a, a piece of bread like a croot, okay? You spread that um, pate now onto that croot and then your roasted woodcock sits on top. The last thing you do is you take the bird, open its beak and split straight down through the middle of the head. And then what you end up doing then is you've got essentially like... Um, two lollipops, okay? And what you're supposed to do traditionally is, I'll leave the rest to your imagination, okay? But you, um, you lick out the head cavity like you would a lollipop. Each to their own, it's not for me. Um, but if anybody wants to try that later. Pigeon, what sort of pigeon? Wood pigeon, so I say dead pigeon. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely a dead pigeon. It's a wood pigeon, okay? How do we know the difference? Fe not, uh, it is to do with the feathers. It's more the, it's more the colouring. If you, if you sort of put that next to a feral pigeon, what you, the, easiest, the easiest way for me is you've got this nice big white flash on the neck, okay? And in their wings there, you've got a nice big white flash there. So when this bird's going past you about 90 miles an hour and you're trying to identify, is that a stock dove, is it a ring collar, is it a feral, is it a woody? You know, because you've got these two big white flashes in this monks of grey. Um, so it's a wood pigeon. Bloody fast um, birds. What can we tell you about this? Okay. Because it's a, fl a fast flying bird, um, it uses its tail basically as a brake, okay? So if you're out shooting wood pigeons and they're circling around you, when they come into land, they open their tail feathers to slow them down to, to land, basically. How many feathers in that tail do you think? Five? It should be, unless my dog's had a few, 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, there's ten. So my dog's at two. There's twelve feathers in that in that tail. And that's basically what they do as they come into land. They'll open that out to slow them down. So that's our that's our wood pigeon. We mentioned earlier about the crop sack. What you'll do is if you just feel your way to the sort of base of the neck, just make a little incision in the base of the neck. And you'll be able to see what this last meal was. And what you've got in there is probably, see this green? So it's probably a little bit of rape. But sometimes you'll open that up and it'll be full of corn, it could be full of barley, it could be full of... Um, full of... Small bird, what's the biggest thing you think that could eat? Piece of bread. 
A mouse. Now they don't tend to eat mice. Yeah, they'll eat an acorn. They'll eat an acorn this sort of big. Uh, you look at that and you think, well, how's he going to do that? He actually dislocates his bottom jaw. Um, so within there, they will manage to pick up a whole, a whole acorn. And you'll sometimes, again, you'll find them in the crop set. The other thing that's actually really popular at the moment is, um, is squirrel. How long you had this? Sorry? How long you had this? <laughs> Not long. <laughs> so this is a rabbit, obviously. Okay. Um, what we're going to do later, those that want to, we can skin this. Okay, has anybody skinned the rabbit before? Easy. Easy. There's, there's three ways that, I've, that I know of um, for rabbit skinning. There's, you can't say there's the right way and the wrong way. Basically, what you can do is head off, feet off, legs off. And what you'll do is you can, fingers between the skin and the fur, work yourself around. You can then make an incision across the back. And you can pull the back end over the back and the front end over the front. Okay? That's one way. Or you can skin it from the back to the front. Or you can skin it from the front to the back. Okay, three ways. Um, there's not a right way, there's not a wrong way. The way that's, or the two ways, if you like, that are preferred from a hygienic point of view, if you think that's the dirty end, you don't want to be dragging the dirty end over the clean end. Okay, so you take, you'd go from the top to the bottom. But it's, it's each to their own and whatever you're, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, I did this workshop in France recently. And in a training kitchen, at the end of every table, they got this, this hole. And in the drawers, they've got this post that goes in this hole, and there's two little hooks. And they take, their, they take their rabbits, and they put their little feet on the hooks, and they draw it straight over the head. That's the way they do it. Um, but what we sort of try, we try and avoid, obviously, going from that way to that way.